Welcome to the session. Um, my name is Diana Safati. I'm the Head of Department of Public Health and the Director of the C3 uh, Research Group. And it's my pleasure today to introduce three speakers. We're going to be talking about um, a particular project that, that our research group did, which was around cancer care journeys and clinical decision making. But they're looking at that project specifically as an exemplar of Māori-centred research. I'm going to be talking about the, the issues um, in relation to that. So we have three speakers. We've got Janine Spearman here, um, who uh, finished her master's last year, was it, Janine? Um, and she did a master's in this topic, so she's uh, been thinking about it a lot. Um, Cheryl Davies, who's been working with us for a number of years now in a variety, for, across a variety of um, projects, and we can't do anything without her, she's awesome. And Professor Louise Signal, who, has, who led the C3, that, that particular project, which was an HRC funded project. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Janine, who's kicking off. Yep. Thank you. Uh, kia ora everybody, uh, ko Janine Stearman Takawingoa, no Ngāti Purayahau. Um, can we just start today's session, um, if everybody could stand actually, and we would like uh, to start with uh, Karakia, which we would like to sing, um, and please everybody join in. Takataka te ho, ki te uru. Akataka te ho, i te tonga. Ia makina ki na ki uta. Ia matara tara ki uta. E hi ake ana. Te atakura e te o e haura e haru i hei mauri ora. Well done. Cease the winds from the west, cease the winds from the south. Let the breeze blow over the land, let the breeze blow over the ocean. Let the red tipped dawn come with a sharpened ear, a touch of a frost, a promise of a glorious day. To the whare te nākwe, to dai our chair and to the organisers of the seminar today, kia ora. To our fellow team members, clinicians, kaimahi and patients, I know that we worked with Tena Koto. To those who have recently departed, Haere, Haere, Haere Atura. Welcome to everybody who's joined us today. No mai, Haere mai. I'll just give you a brief outline of how we're going to run this session. Um, but before I do, I'd just like to recognise um, the author and um, uh, co PI of our, our research project. Uh, who's here today, the, he's the author of the paper that's been handed around, Chris Cunningham. Kia ora Chris, no my hi my great to see you um, again. Uh, so essentially we will, um, I'll give a, a bit of an introduction or overview of Māori centred research and then between um, Louise, myself and Cheryl, we will talk through <laughs> our particular project and using um, Māori centred framework um, as a, a bit of a um, comparison about how we ran our project and how that lined up with Māori centred research. And then finish off um, with sharing some um, learnings and limitations, if you like, of, of that process and also perhaps a bit of a challenge uh, to yourselves going forward. Um, so a very early starting point, I think, is important to mention is the Treaty of Waitangi. Um, I won't go through, of course, what that is um, and just take for uh, granted, if you like, that that's a recognised starting point for those of us undertaking research here at the uh, University of Otago. But in particular relation to our work, um, thinking about Māori control, self-determination and equity uh, in that light. Um, and if we think about research, of course, 
research is actually uh, in part about power and research on, with or for Māori therefore generates information um, or and non-Māori as well actually, sorry, that can be used to inform or focus governments and therefore the allo allocation of resources um, through the organisations that they might, um, particularly in health or housing or other fields, um, that can influence the determinants of health, uh, such as um, contracts, resource allocations to PHOs and DHBs. And also, this, our research quite often influences practice, might influence policy, regulations in the government, lots of different ways our research can be used, and so therefore is potentially quite powerful. If we look back about 30 or 40 years um, in where Māori health and Māori health research was at that time, there was concerns about there being a deficit approaches, quite often done in isolation from the context that people were living in, both historical and cultural. Um, and sometimes the research might have been on Māori, but seemingly to be of little benefit to Māori often describing problems such as low socioeconomic with high prison rates, but not very much about um, generating the explanations for some of that and, and solutions. And when they were, quite often they had an individualistic focus. Uh, and those kinds of things led Māori, Māori communities to become suspicious um, of Pākehā researchers in particular. So there were experts um, around, or and still are, like Graham Smith, Fiona Cram, Linda Smith, Mason Jury, Chris, um, who were thinking about these kinds of things at that time and trying to generate some solutions about how can we uh, take this forward and make it work better for Māori. Um, so a number of frameworks, if you like, were began to be developed um, in, in models in the 80s and 90s. Um, <clears throat> so who can do research on Māori became one of the questions people were trying to answer. So Graham Smith um, had some ideas and suggested some models like a, the Tiaki model, um, which meant that Māori research could be guided and mediated by Māori experts, but it could be involving non-Māori. Um, the whānau model where um, the researcher becomes one of the whānau, if you like, and I think Dame Ann Salmon is probably uh, someone people might recognise as uh, perhaps fits into that category. And uh, problem sharing models as well, uh, sorry, power sharing models, not problem sharing models, um, as ways of looking at empowering Māori in the research uh, process. Um, if I focus in now specifically on the Māori-centred research model, um, Mason Jury also had uh, quite an influence, I think, and, and Chris worked with Mason, um, and still does, no doubt. <laughs> um, and Mason's view was that Māori experiences, values and aspirations should be central, um, that we don't ask... Um, well, we don't say, how can I adopt this approach to Māori? We start by, first of all, asking what is important to Māori and then build out from around that. And that it, therefore it becomes Māori-centred or Māori-centric. Um, is that re repeated? Okay, sorry. Uh, so the, if I focus in again a little bit more on the framework, so um, Chris has um, told us at the time that that paper was um, produced. The goal of the framework was to produce a Māori analysis that would identify um, the directions, competencies and research outcomes that would be of benefit to Māori, would produce Māori knowledge that could be useful for Māori health development and Māori development. And I think around this time this paper was being developed, there was purchasing uh, going on. And so it could particularly be useful in that purchasing, um, influencing purchasing, so purchasers could look, reflect on what they had been purchasing, what they were currently purchasing, and where they might go forward. The model could also be used as a uh, bit of a, an assessment and performance monitoring tool if you wanted to use it um, for yourself. 
Uh, this is the paper there, um, and I think it's um, important or, or potentially a, a resource that you can use to think about the research that you've been involved in and future opportunities that you and your research groups departments might be able to take. Um, <clears throat> we're particularly looking at um, our project in relation to Māori control, participation methods, tools, um, and the analysis there. Interested in, of course, producing knowledge that's useful for improving Māori health. I will now pass over to Louise. Go, Thank you, Janine. Um, so, uh, I was lucky enough to be uh, working here in the department with uh, uh, the C3 uh, team and uh, Diana uh, has some history really with the with a project that I was not involved with and so the way, the way it, as I understand it, it came about was that there was uh, work that Diana had been doing which had clearly highlighted the inequalities for Māori in terms of cancer uh, outcomes and uh, you were involved I think with an international collaboration and in trying to do sort of multi-country uh, examination of inequalities in uh, cancer treatment from, for Indigenous peoples, uh, but unfortunately we weren't able to progress that in the way that you'd hoped, but uh, still we were then um, uh, able to progress it here in New Zealand and uh, led this wonderful work uh, called um, the C3 uh, project. And uh, it's, uh, first of all, was a quantitative piece of work. Uh, and then in the second year, uh, Chris and I uh, put a bid to the HRC with, uh, uh, with our team and with Di to, um, uh, look at the qualitative, qualitative elements of that, and that's the one that we're going to talk to you about today. So it really was a it was a partnership uh, at that top level with Chris and me leading it, uh, and we're going to talk in some detail around uh, what that looks like, uh, focusing on cancer and comorbidity because we know comorbidity is one of the major problems for us in this equity gap, uh, and. Um, you, we, we worked with our colleagues at Massey, obviously we had uh, very strong ongoing relationships with, with Chris and the team, uh, Liz Allison Roshman and others, uh, and also with um, tu, uh, Tupukahi um, Māori Asma uh, at uh, Kōkiri Marae where Cheryl uh, is the lead and again expertise there and also um, established relationships. So it was really a case of us working with our friends, our colleagues, uh, people who also had shared interests in the area and um, doing so um, because we had this collective desire to understand this very big conundrum that's going on in our country. Um, and you could say, well, so why would we choose Māori-centred research? And certainly at 59 now, I can tell you that the story that Janine was speaking of, she did, did you say 40 years, I think she said 40 years, so that would make me 19, wouldn't it? Studying um, anthropology at... Uh, at, at uh, Massey um, with uh, Hugh Carveru and uh, thinking about ethnicity and race. And um, we, uh, I guess I've always had a pretty strong um, a focus on my culturalism throughout my, my history and, and, and through my work. Um, but I found myself when I came to this department to a place where it was accepted, it was understood that the way one worked was in collaboration, in partnership. You would not do uh, the sort of research that Chris highlights in that table that you have in the paper in front of you, research not involving Māori, research that neither sought nor considered um, that it was relevant for Māori. And I can tell you that there were plenty of pieces of Chris is nodding and Riley smiling of research that were done where uh, they were of absolutely critical uh, importance to Māori uh, could have made an enormous difference and their opinions, their role, their responsibility, their, their place in this work was neither sought nor considered relevant. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so for me, a uh, very comfortable feeling to be here to know that this was how things were done in this department. Uh, and um, we, why do we do that? Well, our, we strongly recognise our treaty obligation. We are spending Crown money. Um, we have uh, public health values, which would uh, uh, send us in this direction anyway. And, and frankly, uh, it works. You can have effective outcomes if you work with those people whose health you are trying to improve. That process, as they say in that famous document from Canada, of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health. 
Um, so uh, it is um, a great pleasure to have been working with such a wonderful team over such a long time. Let me hand back to you. Okay, so just um, digging down and in, into our project a little bit more and thinking about the framework. So one of the things that um, the framework suggests us or encourages us to do is to think about who does have control. And the scale kind of moves across from mainstream control, shared control to Māori control there. So for our particular project, um, control largely sat with mainstream organisations because uh, the, you know, the universities, um, Otago, Massey, and the Health Research Council as the funders are largely in control of the project um, at, a, at a governance, if you like, level. Uh, for this project, what that meant, though, is that there's kind of a dual accountability, really, uh, going on, because although on, in one context these were the people with control, for us, Māori participants also had control in this process and communities and so who we would be accountable to included Māori there so like a double bottom line if you like there um, and working um, when uh, control or power is um, shared like that there can be limitations potentially with that as well um, so if there is um, contrasting views on issues um, that can work against each other. I think generally across our project, we didn't um, really encounter that problem. So it, it uh, worked quite well, but I think it's a, an important point to be mindful of that there are limitations potentially. Um, when we looked at Māori participation in our, um, our uh, program, our research project, sorry, um, we, saw that we had quite major Māori participation, so from co-PIs there with, with Chris and Louise, um, research team members, uh, experts in their fields there, along with a, 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 a new researcher myself. And to some degree, I think um, trying to tease apart what Māori-centred research was, in part because of my questioning so what is this Māori centred research as a new researcher? What is that? What does it look like? How do I do it? Um, because it's my job to, you know, in part to, to go out, collect data, but participate in the analysis there. So um, I needed to understand these things uh, going on here. We also had a community Māori oversight group, which I think about six of the member of the eight members were Māori. So again, significant. Uh, Māori participation there, and in phase three um, was largely led um, in partnership with Cheryl and Huya from uh, Tukotahi, based out at Kōkiri, Marae and Seaview there. So needing that community um, knowledge, expertise and connections to make sure that we could be as successful as possible uh, with that. Um, just continuing on, Māori participation. So we wanted to make sure that in all the MDTs that we recorded, we took particular account of the Māori participants in there um, and the recruitment of those and the MDTs, Jonathan Hoyer up in um, Auckland uh, and myself down here uh, largely undertook the data collection and all Māori on the research team were involved in the analysis. Uh, in phase two, where we um, looked at people's consultations. Um, I was largely uh, the person in collaboration with Virginia Signal, um, who worked in our team in that phase um, to collect the data there. All, all Māori interviews were undertaken involving at least one Māori researcher. We targeted with this project, um, we were targeting 30 participants so we wanted to have 15 Māori and 15 non-Māori in our project. Unfortunately, actually, when it came to it, uh, we actually only recruited five. Uh, and I think that was largely a reflection of the scoping, if you like, and the participation of clinicians, because, of course, you can only recruit participants through the, in this particular study. We could only do that with patients that were under particular clinicians who signed up to be part of our study. And so trying to size that, the fluctuation of that across 
the year was quite significant and perhaps unknown at the time that the proposal was written. Uh, we also made sure to work with whānau care services and at least to let them know to, about our project that when it was happening so that if there were any um, issues raised by whānau in the hospital setting that whānau care knew what was going on and again their Māori, um, on this particular one, Māori led the analysis of the Māori data which um, I did largely as part of my Masters um, but also with the, with the wider team as well. Um, when we look at the methods and tools, um, we largely used what would be uh, common um, contemporary um, qualitative tools used, I guess, to collect our data and our methods, um, thematic analysis, for example, in there. We had four sources of data, so just trying to make sure that we could um, get lots of different um, angles in and develop confidence, if you like, in what our findings might be. Uh, just a, an example, I won't labour this, these, these methods and tools are quite common, um, literature reviews, final interviews. Um, what I would say is with the analysis, they're just picking that apart a little bit more, is being considerate of Māori world views and models um, when we're undertaking the analysis there, so that our um, when we are inter interpreting things, um, that we are thinking about that from Māori world views. Um, and then when we're working with our non-Māori colleagues, that if it's appropriate to challenge something, um, that we can have quite interesting and robust discuss discussions around that. Um, one of the ones we did have as an example was the perception of a Māori woman on a ward, and I'm kind of jumping a little bit into Cheryl's space here, but in phase three, where she took a lot of care around her space, if you like, and like taking her sheets off the bed and cleaning and, and those types of things. And, you know, just the different views on what that might represent from um, some initial discussions that we had, my perception of, all oh, that's just normal kind of sense. When you stay on a marae and it's your last day to leave, these are the kind of activities that you would undertake. You would take your bedding off and, um, you know, try and clean your space as much as you can. Uh, so just a, a different view on how a patient's behaviour can be interpreted there. Not saying any one was right or wrong necessarily, but just different views there. Uh, and I will hand over now to Cheryl to talk a little bit more about Phase 3. Uh, kia ora anō. Um, so for Phase 3, we were interested in um, looking at factors that enhanced or hindered um, cancer patients' experiences and journeys, um, and especially looking at um, how that impacted on Māori patients. We were also interested in looking at um, appropriate interventions um, that might pro provide some solutions. Often there is an assumption when undertaking research involving Māori um, that recruitment will be difficult. Our, re our research team have a long-standing partnership um, we each bring our own expertise areas to contribute to the study. Working in partnership with organisations like Tukotahi and Kōkiri Marae, who have built the trust and confidence of our communities um, over many years, ensures that recruitment of not only Māori, but um, often non-Māori um, participants is not an arduous task. Because we were able to take a Māori-centred approach, this enabled my Māori colleague and I to undertake the research interviews in a way that was appropriate for Māori. We included karakia, or prayer, before and after the interview. If requested, um, the use of te reo, the Māori language, the taking of kai or food, and the concept of whanaungatanga, which is an all-encompassing sense of belonging or fitting in, to create a safe environment for everyone. And not surprisingly, this approach was also well received by non-Māori. Um, we, we decided to have 
two interviewers because of the um, because of the area that we were interviewing in, it was important for us to maintain that um, contact with the person we were interviewing. Um, and so we had someone else who would look after the recording, take notes, and um, one of us would be just focused on, um, on, on listening, listening and, um, and caring about what was being said because what was being shared with us was a taonga, was often, was often information that they hadn't even shared with their own whānau. Um, so it was a huge privilege for us. So we had semi-structured interviews um, with 34 participants, 19 Māori and 15 non-Māori, 18 males and 16 females. Um, as a Māori provider, enabling a Māori-centred research approach, a provided us with a great opportunity to build our research capacity and credibility as individuals and also as an emerging Māori <coughs> research organisation. Initially, we were involved in the recruitment, interviewing, um, interpreting data, and the reporting and sharing of the findings. The strength of our long-standing relationship is now reflected in my feeling included as part of the C3 research team, my involvement in the research retreat where I can provide input into the research design, and my inclusion as an author on a number of papers. Kia Okay, so just to reflect on some learnings from our um, project against the framework and what helped make it work, I think, was the leadership um, of our teams and the researchers at a senior level, if they don't, um, if they're not committed to improving Māori health and looking at doing things differently and improving things, then they wouldn't take on these kinds of approaches. So the challenge there, I think, is for, for PIs to, to be thinking about how they are leading their teams. The capacity, of course, within teams, uh, Māori capacity in particular, I'm thinking of here. So how can, within the research that we do, uh, build Māori research capacity, both in-house and in the community setting? Um, to make sure that when we are undertaking our research and these approaches that we are mindful of different worldviews uh, in the research uh, that we are undertaking. The, the value of the connections and relationships that we've been developing um, both as individuals, as research groups, as institutions with other researchers in, in their organisations uh, and how we might continue to build and strengthen those and work together. Our own tikanga and kawa guidelines into how we practice and undertake our research is important. Um, and they're just that continually wanting to improve. So our, our commitment to quality um, as individuals as well as groups and organisations there. Um, within the actual nuts and bolts, if you like, of the research process, uh, being inclusive of patients and whanau in our thinking and in our analysis as much as we can there, that we are flexible when it comes to undertaking interviews. Um, you know, like sometimes it can be we've organised something to go on and then something else has come up and I'm just about to interview someone after their consultation but their sister who's giving them a ride home wants to go now and so I can't do my interview with them. So what am I going to do about that? Is it going to be a major problem? No, it's not actually. So just you're actually coming in on Friday to, to have some scans done so is it okay if I, if I catch you then? Uh, so how we treat people, how we respond, how we can be um, flexible in our approaches there. Of course, privacy and confidenti confidentiality goes across the board, um, and I think that applies for everyone. And it can be um, an interesting one when we're involving whānau, because if we look at kind of mainstream approaches to, to ethics and confidentiality and involving whānau there, so the way we were able to, the way we underdid undertook that within our research was to, when we initially approached patients, will you have a whānau member present with you? Are you okay being with them being involved in your interview? So just checking that right up front there um, 
in the process. Time and space, so just taking that time, having that time and that space to do what needs to be done in the time that works for the participants that you are working with, whether it's organisations, whether it's the actual patients and whānau themselves. Sometimes we might feel constrained by timelines and reports and things when you know, the funding runs out in December and so we need to have it done by then. Um, and so the sense of pressure and, and being mindful not to um, pass that on. Um, simple things like kai and koha, when someone's just had a significant hour and a half long um, interview or consultation, sorry, with their medical oncologist, they might need a little bit of a break before you uh, undertake your research with them. Simple things like parking. Everybody in this building probably appreciates how difficult parking is at the moment. Imagine if you're a patient coming in here in Farno, maybe you have some physical limitations as well, so even just getting around in itself. Um, and also offering, of course, to share our research findings with the participants in our study. Uh, another important learning for us. Uh, limitations and opportunities. So the dual accountabilities is, a, is both a limitation and an opportunity potentially there. The size. So I mentioned earlier that um, when we were looking at MDTs, if we were going to do that again, we might do things differently to try and get a, a bigger a number of Māori participants from the MDTs that we, multidisciplinary team meetings that we uh, looked at. Um, Māori knowledge, so the opportunity to generate that and making sure that in terms of limitations that we have the capacity to put in place the processes to enable us to do that there. That opportunity to always make sure that we are um, improving and sharing the knowledge that we have so it can actually be of benefit uh, to others there. Uh, at the bottom is our link to our uh, team's website where there are a number of publications uh, with the findings of our research, which of course you are most welcome to go in and access. Um, and I just want to perhaps um, repeat a challenge or whittle to you to, uh, you might actually on reflection look back at some of the work that you've done and thought actually that was quite mighty centred, that research we did. But it's not necessarily presented that way in publications. So to be perhaps reflective and thinking about that and to publish your work, of course, going forward if you are using a mighty centred research approach to identify it as such. Uh, and also to, if you're planning future research, if you can think about unpacking what that might look like for you and your team, your department, and how you can reflect that in the work that you do, uh, that would be the challenge we leave you with today. Kia ora. Thank you very much, you guys, for presenting that work. Um, I feel exceptionally fortunate to, to be in a team with you guys and have been for quite a few years and hopefully will be for quite a few more. Um, we get to learn a lot from each other, I think, and I very much value your input. Um, I just wondered before I open the floor to questions if, um, Chris, uh, you had any particular comments Not to put you on the spot or anything. Thank you. <laughs> uh, kura kura, two things to start with. Congratulations, Janine, on, on completing your master's degree. And also, thank you for using a photograph that's about 15 years old. <laughs> that was very good. It was a really good summary. I, was, I appreciated it very much in terms of the approach that we, we took um, in thinking about um, the process that we went through with Diana to actually apply for an international project that didn't work. Um, but we were able to get both the qualitative and the quantitative projects funded by the HRC, so that was great. And a really good, I think, demonstration of how uh, we work with uh, organisations outside of the university, like uh, um, Kōkiri to Kotahi, and also work with, um, uh, with, with Māori patients in quite a different way. Um, and I think you've demonstrated nicely some of the challenges that some, well, some people think they're challenges, it's kind of the way that uh, Māori research roles in terms of when it's convenient and when it's not convenient in your independent or not of you know not objective relationship necessarily with um, the people you're working with. So, uh, so thank you for that. I think it's something that's um, increasingly being used, which is great, and seeing more as uh, as more mainstream and less alternative. 
uh, which is also great. Um, but demonstrates, I think, the limitations we sometimes have when we work in university. And we have to balance these things against each other. Um, and uh, I think the main message is for all researchers to understand where projects and where you are located and to not be apologetic or embarrassed about that, but to understand where you are and what the limitations might be. So uh, well done and congratulations. Um, some drives open up the floor now in general for any questions or comments that people might have. Hi, I'm Mel, Mel Joyce. I'm one of the ops managers here. I manage Children's Health and I'm sitting with my counterpart, Sarah, who manages um, oncology and haematology and the adult services. And I guess the question for me is, I want to know what you found out. <laughs> and you know what, you know, so then we can actually look at what we're doing in our environments to make a difference for our Māori consumers. So I'm just kind of interested in when you're going to do a presentation on that, really. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it, really. And, and have you got any comments around that particularly? Tricky. <laughs> um, from a past life at Fisidia Politech, I'm a nurse by trade. That's how we know each other from more, than, well, probably about that time, oh, 30 odd oh, years ago. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, last century. Um, so the findings of our research. So the link is um, to our page, but also um, on that page there's some presentations that have been done about the findings of the research. So Louise has done a, a presentation that's been videoed um, and is available online, and I think Di has as well. So certainly go and check out the, pay, the page there, but would also be happy to have perhaps a talk over a coffee or something of the like to, yeah, talk about it perhaps in a bit more depth. Yeah. Yep, sounds good. Kia <laughs> ora. Any other questions? Comments? People want lunch. Hi, is good. Kira, that was lovely. Thank you. Would you talk some more about the dual accountability? Uh, I say dual, um, really just to identify that there's those different bottom lines, I think, there. And so... For me as a Māori researcher, as an example, like my accountability will be to my Māori colleagues working out in the community. So how our organisation, if you like, I take the rap, good or bad, for how our organisation might work with, out in the community there. So those different accountabilities there, as well as, you know, within the university setting and all the drivers that determine our, how we do our research, how it's funded, um, you know, the reporting kind of things. Um, in some ways, when we work in institutions like this, I think we do the best that we can to work with those um, limitations. And then I guess over time, as you become more experienced as a researcher and um, funding applicant, you learn how to try and work the system better. Um, and so the, the power of the team when it comes to dual accountability, whether it's from the accountabilities to patients and whanau out in the community, with our colleagues who are out in the community or, or in-house, they're all just, I think, things we need to be mindful of and always trying to remember that there's a number of them that we have to address. I don't know if that particularly answers your question, but just that it is a bit like, a juggle, if you like, that's always going, continuously going on in, in the life of a researcher, I think, and particularly a Māori researcher. Kia ora, <coughs> Kia ora Bridget Robson, a colleague of Janine's and Cheryl's. <laughs> um, Cheryl, I'm, I'm quite keen to hear from you as a researcher based within a, um, a really busy and amazing Māori health provider that's providing great services for our, for our communities and also developing your own research um, centre. What, what criteria do you use or, to decide what research to get involved with and what might help uh, your mahi or, your, your, or the health of your community? Is it, have you got any 
um, instructions for us, I suppose. Um, I think a big factor in um, the decisions we make and the types of research we take part in is definitely around the relationships we have. Um, it takes quite a few years to build a trusting relationship. So we have some pretty amazing relationships here in the university with um, a number of the researchers. And the other thing is too, we know our communities. So actually we know, we know what will make a difference and what will have a positive impact um, you know, for the communities that we work amongst. Um, probably another big, um, another area that I, I always think about is um, how will we feed this information back to our communities? Because often in the past that hasn't happened. Um, and that's been um, a huge area for our communities. That's what's been fed back to us over the years, is that um, we don't hear back uh, around what the results have been. So we you know, I, I am really, um, I'm really clear that if we, um, if we are going out and um, taking information from our communities, then we also need to come back and um, give back some um, feedback or report back to our communities on what has been the outcome. So they're probably some of the main um, factors that I look for. And I always think of Mona Jackson, Actually, when I first started working in research, I went and spoke to Mona, and so he talked about reciprocity, and that's um, probably been a huge driving factor for me, is looking at, a bit like what Janine said, that reciprocal um, relationship between the researchers, the organisations, and the community. I hope that answers your question. Kilda. Well, if there are no more questions, I'll bring the session to a close. I would just like to re-emphasise the importance of real, genuine, long-standing relationships. Um, I think at the end of the day, they are without question the most fundamental foundation to achieving this kind of work, because in the end, together we are just so much stronger than we are individually or in, in separate groups and and that does take time and it has to be genuine um, so I think that that, that came through really clearly in the, the presentation but I, I'd like to just re-emphasize that and also to thank the presenters today for the presentation but also for their years of very hard work and all the hard work that is to come um, thank you very much